Coming up, I'll show you how a snap-on electronic torque wrench works. I'll also show you how to fill your cooling system up with a vacuum uh, filling system from Snap-on. I'm going to use a big yellow bucket to do a bit of fishing. Right, Range Rovers and Discoveries and also other cars like Fords, etc. Your coolant bottle over a period of time will get so hot they start to get hairline cracks. So what we're going to do today, preventative uh, maintenance, we're going to change the coolant bottle, put a brand new one in. So this is the old one. I started to drain the, uh, the coolant out of it. So that's the old bottle. So what we've ordered from Land Rover is a brand new uh, coolant bottle. That's a part number. This is preventative measure, maintenance. So that's the brand new one. Now what coolant does, because it gets so hot, these expand and contract all the time. You possibly get hairline cracks in them. So it's just worth changing the coolant bottle every so often. We've ordered a new cap as well. So that goes on to there. Now in the uh, expansion coolant bottle, you get a new sensor on the bottom. It's all part of the kit. One hose goes on to there. And the other hose goes on to there. What I'm going to do today is change about five hoses. One of the hoses is that one, which is at the bottom of the uh, radiator. That's going to come out. A new one's going to go in. But the bit I want you to see, if I can get a torch round, is at the bottom of the rad, there it is, is the drain. Get the torch on it. There's a drain plug at the bottom of the radiator. It's a uh, nylon uh, plug. Let me just get some fo focus on that. There, I think it's five or ten newton meters. Got to undo it, drain it into a bucket, which it's been doing for five minutes. That's half the radiator trained. Right, one thing we've also got to do on the uh, driver's side, you've got two uh, charge cooler radiators. That clip's got to be undone to drain it now while i've got all the shields off there's a little bit of surface rust i'm going to put some hemorrhite paint onto all that those rust exposed areas get them all nice and clean again now you'll notice on here that piece there is the uh front dynamic uh pump can you notice i've greased it all with copper grease again the preventative maintenance got no leaks down here but can you see how i've put copper grease around it to stop it so uh, i mean the car looks immaculate underneath except a little bit of surface rust one of the uh, one of the pipes we're going to change today this is uh land rover products that goes on the bottom of the radiator now when you're changing pipes by the pipe then you can see how it's been fitted to the car you can see the connections on it so this one's got a c-clip pulls off and that will slide off the radiator you don't need to undo this uh, pipe on the one i'm going to take off on the car i'm going to take this off completely then pull this off because over a period of time with the coolant it will bond to the radiator so that clip needs to be lifted off and that will come off so this is the pipe I'm going to replace today, one of them. It's got a sensor on top as well. Notice how the clips go on. And again, on the very, very top, you've got a seat clip. If I pull it up on there, that's how it's, uh, that's how it's connected. When you've got it on, push it, locks it on. Now we've also got uh, a complete Range Rover service manual, which I've printed out. It tells you step by step. Let me just get it over a minute. Now the guys at Land Rover gave me this. This is the uh, workshop manual. Let me just click it, fill in the cooling system. So it tells you step by step what to do. 
I mean, everything, spark plugs, uh, automatic transmission. These are some of the pages I've printed out to uh, help me when I'm working on the car. You see, it's even got IDP film on there. Torque settings are the most important thing. Oh, I've got a new toy, which I'll show you in a minute. Expansion uh, bottle. First thing to do is to take this off here. So clip off, pull the hose out. Now when you've got these little clips, which is like that, put it back onto the uh, part. So when you put it back together, you're not looking for parts. And on the back of it, there's a uh, another bleed plug. It's got to come off. She's got to come off. Now what holds a bottle in, you will need to get around here as well. There is a, uh, what size is that? Eight mil nut. This expansion bottle's never been off the car since it was new. Now I have changed the coolant twice before in it, but this is getting a major overhaul. Right, she's loose on there. Now at the bottom of here, to get these clamps off, I'm not sure what you call these clamps. You need one of these tools which basically pulls, pulls them together and you can take them off. Uh, you can buy these from eBay. Uh, this was about 25, 30 pound. There are others which are 80 quid. Uh, these I got off uh, eBay. I had to get two of them because what happens is the ratchet mechanism, they're obviously built, they're obviously built cheap. So this is the third one I've had. Right, let's get this uh, plug off the bottom of this thing. Right. Now what I've got to do is get that line there. As I said, this thing's never been off at all. These are so bloody tight, these uh, connectors. All right, got the clip on. Put the clip on, grease the, uh, the nipple. Make sure that clamp is on the end before you put it on. Push it on, let go. But make sure that's facing so you can get to it again. Now what we've also got here, if I can find it, you've got the switch, which is a low coolant switch. That's got to be clipped in. Just get my hands in there. It goes one way, obviously. Me saying that it might go upside down. It'll only go one way anyway, you can feel it with it. There you go, clipped in. Make sure that's clipped in. Now the reservoir, make sure that uh, harness doesn't get trapped anywhere. That coolant bottle's got a screw on top. Just literally nip it up. Two lugs have got to go into the side bit pod to hold it, the uh, low coolant pressure pipes in the bottom, that's coolant pipes in the very bottom of there, right well, I've got the clip onto it, that's in there, that's got to be in the groove there, which I'll do that in a bit, that sits into there, so what we're going to do now we've got that done, the bottom hose is done, we're going to pressure test the system before we do the coolant. Now we've put a new uh, reservoir in, we put the new hoses on the car. Before we put the coolant in, we're going to do a pressure, tech, pressure test on the uh, car to make sure we've got no leaks with the hoses. And what we're going to do, that one there is the Range Rover. All these are for different uh, car manufacturers, BMW and all that. New reservoir, just nip it. We have checked all the hoses. No coolants in the car at the moment, so what we're going to do, pressurise the whole system. What we're going to do is take it up to 15, leave it for 20 minutes. It will drop one PSI. We're going to leave that for at least 20 minutes. We just turn it around. It shouldn't drop at all, which will tell us the uh, system's under pressure and it's not losing anything. This is some of the kit that we use. Uh, this is for large trucks cooling system. It will also do cars. 
So what we've done, we've gone and bought the kit. A snap on, probably the best you can get. Uh, Volvo, Dodge, uh, different uh, vehicles, heavy trucks. Laminated sheet you get. Tells you the uh, thread diameter as well. The one we're going to be using today is that one. Uh, lovely machined uh, adapter. Uh, I mean, look at the washer on there. Snap on do lovely bits of kit. That's uh, for a large truck. Get the chrome on there. We've got a Volvo in there. I mean, look at it. Look at it. How it's machined. Snap on. Lovely bits of kit. Now, to go with that, that's what we're going to be using today. That's for the uh, that will fit a Range Rover and Land Rover products. So let me just put this on the side a minute. Now, to go with this bit of kit, we've actually got that dual Venturi. Uh, so we can actually prime the system. It takes all the air out of the system. Got some valves on top, put it in the bucket, let it flow through and it will fill the system up. All right, one adapter from a snap-on, new bottle. So we're going to put them onto there. Just clipping. That's on there. Nice fit. We're going to get the tool now. Look at the build quality of that. I mean, look at how thick that, that rubber is. What a bit of kit. Right, it goes into there, turn that. So we've got a um, funnel there to take out any air out of the system. We're going to bleed it up through here. Valve shut, that shut, an airline set up. Never mix coolants up. You either got red or pink as this is. You've got green and BMW, I think you need green. Now what I've done, I've actually put five, uh, 5, 10, 15, I've put 15 litres in there, so I've got more than enough. So what I'm going to do now is create a vacuum. We're going to do we're going to hold it for at least two minutes on the green and because this is the dual ventura see how quick it did it it does it in half the time Can you see the way to it? It's not going to lift up. That's holding the pressure nicely. We've done a dry pressure test on it already. In a minute I'm going to open the valve which will let the coolant up into the system and it will go down to negative air again. That's holding nicely that is. Just do a little bit more. Open this valve. Actually, what I want to do is just hold this a minute. I'm going to bleed some air off a minute at the pipe. What I'm going to do is leave that running, open this up. Right, now there, I've taken the air out of the system. So when I open this valve now, it will let it all in and there's no air. So what I'm going to do now is let this one open. We'll do the bucket now. I won't do it just yet. Right, I'm going to open the tap. Right, it's now going into the system. So what it's doing, it's filling the uh, system up with uh, coolant. 
with a negative vacuum in there. You can see it going down the, uh, it's going down very quick actually. If it gets to the ends, I'll have to turn it off and uh, just fill it back up again. You do not want the container emptying. We're nearly there at the moment. This is the safest and easiest way to fill your cooling system up because obviously it purges all the air out of the system. But it has taken, what, a minute to do? <clears throat> Just shut that off a second. Now, because we've got a bleed valve there, I'm just going to make sure there's no air in the system. Just put that there to catch anything. Right, next thing to do, I'm going to start the car. Right, that's on zero. So, I can go off. How much cooling do we have left? Because I put uh, 5, 10, 15 litres in there. So we're going to reuse that. That's, uh... Now over the years, you start collecting nice pieces of kit. And one of the favourite kits I've got is a torque wrench. Uh, this one is, uh, this is doing the wheels. Uh, 300 newton metres that goes up to. I work in newton metres, that's the wheel one. And that one I've used for about five years, 2003, actually, that's an old one. But that one I get recalibrated every uh, two years. Chap comes around from Snap-on, uh, recalibrates the torque wrench. Uh, that one goes from eight to 60 Newton meters. Torque wrenches you can't go wrong. And I've always wanted a nice torque wrench. So what I did, when I treated myself to a snap-on. This thing is absolutely rock. Brilliant. Electronic. Got a light on as well. There, 40 newton meters. This one's a swivel head. <clears throat> I basically put the lights on there a minute. 38 newton meters. I mean, it goes down to 6.5. 6.8 is what it goes that down to. And it goes up to, I think it's 300. Most things on cars are 20, I mean, the oil filter is 25. Uh, some plugs, 25. Uh, I mean, look at that for a bit of kit. give you a little demo on the strut brace the nuts so at the moment it's set on 31 i'm going to do the 40 because it won't be any more than 40 40 newton meters so if i go over to there now basically if i hold that onto there all right so Gonna wait for these lights to light up and see what it says at the moment. Probably about 50 that is. Let's just do that a little bit less. So we're gonna set it to 34. Alright, that's set on 34. Make sure the head's on. There you go. And that was set at 30, 35, that was. I'll do that one, get it to re-zero a minute. Let's put the light on so I can see what's happening. So it's set on 35, this is. Thirty four point two. Do that again. What have I got it set on? 
35. Thirty-five point four. I've done that one slightly over on this one. <clears throat> if you go too much, which I will go a little bit too much, and you go red. There you go. That's gone over. That's thirty-six point seven. That's bleeps red, and it's uh, warned me. You can go on this one, which is very unusual. You can go backwards to make sure you've got it on 